Hey, Schlepp here. I made it to Georgia with my pack in one piece. It was a little nerve wracking checking it after how much time went into putting it together, but with things like poles and a knife, it couldn't be carried on. So luckily here, all good. I'm spending the weekend at a cabin with some family friends for a little rest and relaxation before starting the trail. It is a little strange to be here, still on civilization, but yet only with the things that I'll be bringing with me on the hike. So. I'm wearing this hiking outfit, for example, the entire weekend, and my toiletries consist of a comb, a toothbrush, and toothpaste, so not much for getting ready and hitting the town. I just got my last practice hike in with all of my gear here along the Aska trail system, not too far from where I'll start the AT itself in just two days. Everything is spitting and working really well, so all systems go. Lunch is a steak sandwich left over from last night's barbecue, a far cry from the Pop-Tart peanut butter sandwiches that will be my future. <laughs> mm. And with one final trip to the grocery store and an outfitter to get food, fuel, and water for the first week, my pack is now complete. The day is finally here. I'm at Amakalola Park, which is where the approach trail is for the AT. It's about an 8.8 .8 mile trail that doesn't actually count towards any AT miles, but gets you to the top of Springer Mountain. And about 0.2 miles in is where I'll be staying tonight on the actual AT. The hike is relatively short, although the first week or two you begin with lower miles to get your trail legs. And there is 2,000 feet of elevation gain and 600 stairs on the trail. So no easy feat, but looking forward to the day. at the top of Amakaloa Falls. It's beautiful. Luckily, the hike actually wasn't that difficult. Shout out to Alta. Thanks to my high rise in New York for giving me 50 flights of stairs to train on to make this kickoff not so bad. To keep electrolytes up midday, I'll be using electrolyte packets poured into water um, to have along with my lunch. Lunch this week will be gourmet tortillas with pressed peanuts and some fruit, AKA Skippy peanut butter and some dried dates. Getting fancy on trail. I have been following the blue blazes today up the approach trail, but now that I am on the AT proper, it is these white rectangles that are two by six painted on trees and rocks and all sorts of things all the way to Maine. Day one is in the books. I made it a little further than planned, a few miles into the AT itself. Um, I'm at Stover Creek Shelter tonight and we were asked not to sleep in the shelter. So there's about 10 other hikers here and we've all pitched our tents. We plan to start cooking our dinners and get a bonfire going to hang out and start getting to know each other fellow through hikers. Before I sign off for the night, I want to give two huge shout outs to some family friends, to Rory for hiking the approach trail with me today and all of the prep we've done together for our packs and AT plans, and to Dennis for putting us up in the cabin for the weekend and putting up with both Rory and I. You guys are amazing. The kickoff to this hike would not have been the same without you. Day one was great, made it further than I planned, about 11 and a half miles to the third shelter. It ended up thunderstorming all night. I was warm inside. However, packing up this morning, the tent is drenched, which means everything it's next to is now drenched and caked in mud. So we'll see how far I make it today. I am planning to stop for lunch um, at another shelter to try to dry myself out as well as my tent and any other gear that gets destroyed.
checking out a random cemetery along the trail to shake things up on the rainy day. Hey! After hiking for five miles in the rain and playing a guessing game if something was the actual trail or if it was a stream, I'm taking a break at a shelter for some lunch, getting to dry out some of my things and potentially stay here if the rain continues. Some southbounders coming the other direction said the next shelter was already full and it seems that after one night, through hikers are done listening to the rule of not sleeping in the shelters due to COVID when it's cold and raining. It just isn't feasible to be outside day in, day out and have to pack it all in filthy and set it up again the next day wet. Good morning, day three. I did end up staying at that shelter last night, spent the afternoon drying things out and watching the rain from cover, which was great. Got to know some through hikers, played cards, hung out. It was actually a really nice day. Not thrilled about how few miles we did, but planning to make it up today with 12 miles to Woody Gap. So far, it's not raining, it's chilly, but there's a little bit of sun, so it should be a nice day. Well, I jinxed that and it started raining the second I said that. So I was visiting my parents before this and they watch the kind of TV like with commercials. So we watched The Voice and then I went to Georgia to see their friends and we watched the same exact episode of The Voice again. And now I'm on trail walking for hours on end and what keeps playing in my head is welcome to Team Legend. Get out of my head, John Legend. The hike into Woody Gap was supposed to have some killer views and we're passing them on all of the ups and downs. However, they all look like this, covered in fog. So about 3,000 feet of elevation gain today without very many rewarding views. The Georgia portion of the AT is almost like training camp for the rest of the through hike. There's campsites and shelters pretty close together. So regardless of what mileage you do in a given day, there's typically a carved out campsite there waiting for you so you don't have to create your own. At those sites, there's also more amenities than just the shelter, privy, and fire ring itself. Georgia has bear boxes as well as cables to either hang or stash your food without having to throw it over a tree at the very beginning. The biggest resource I would say though is people. Through hikers, day hikers, section hikers alike, there are so many people on the trail with a wide range of experiences, all with different gear, food, thoughts, and people have been very helpful to one another. So as we all learn what we're doing and begin to build our trail legs, Georgia has been an amazing place to start. Pretty soon we'll be crossing the border into North Carolina and starting the Smokies, which is a more difficult and a longer stretch. So it's nice to get a feel for the trail before starting that portion. I'm quickly starting to pick up tips on the trail to make my camp chores more efficient, such as having my toothbrush and toothpaste in my food bag to brush after meals and so that it's already in the bear bag since it's considered smellables uh, to hang at night so that bears and critters aren't smelling it and coming into your tent or campsite. Also stashing your snacks in your fanny pack at the beginning of the day so there's one less stuff sack to rifle through as you're hiking. The biggest learning, which has really been difficult for me, was that I can't plan as much as I normally would. I'm somebody who lives based on spreadsheets and my Google Calendar, and I'm realizing that I need to throw all of that out the window for a successful hike. Each day that I've gotten up, I've had a certain plan of how many miles I would do and where I would stay, and of the past four days, exactly zero have actually gone to plan. And I'm learning that it's okay and that I need to know my next resupply point to understand how much food I need and a rough pace that I need to average to make it to the next point with enough food. Um, and that's it. And then I need to just let go of the other plans because the trail decides what your day is, not you. Day four and I am back at the cabin hanging out. Last night there were severe thunderstorm warnings. People were told to either find a spot in a shelter or get off trail. And coincidentally, I was able to get an appointment that I needed to check the box on sooner than later. Luckily, I was still close to my friend's house, so I had a ride and a place to stay. Ultimately, not only was the appointment canceled, but it is a very sunny and beautiful day. So this did not go to plan, and it's really just a zero day. I was able to do laundry, take a shower, and resupply my food, so it isn't all for naught. And 
Trail's been amazing so far. So I'm really excited to get back on tomorrow, day five, do a big mile day and catch back up to where I thought I would be. Thanks for watching. You can subscribe to my channel for weekly updates as I go deeper into the trail. Thank you.